G'day folks, my name is Rich Hungerford and I run Bush Law Australia. Today we're in the tracker camp where we base most of our courses from and I'm going to talk to you very very briefly about what I refer to as the survival tea ceremony. So it's based on the premise of the Japanese tea ceremony which is Chado or Chano Yu and it's that principle of being mindful about a situation as it's evolving around you. Now the reason I came up with this strategy was many many years ago, so there's a story to this, Many, many years ago, when I was a young soldier, before I even went to the SAS regiment, I remember being lost in the Malaysian jungle, thanks to a young officer's inability to navigate effectively at the time. And I was one of the young section commanders, and we were having a bit of a heated discussion at the time about where we were and where we weren't. And I remember looking over at my old platoon sergeant, who'd been around the, while, the, the traps for quite a while. And I would noticed on many occasions when we were in a heated state of discussion or debate or argument even, this guy would always sit to the side and he had this almost methodical, mindful process of making a cup of tea. So he'd pull out his military stove, put in his hexamine tablets, pour his water into his cup's canteen, set it all up, light it, and he'd go through this process very much like the steps of the Japanese tea ceremony. While he was doing all that, we were still over on the other side of the area, discussing, debating, and getting quite heated and upset about everything. This guy would then have that amazing ability to turn around and go, fellas, just a thought, but have you considered this, this, or this? And it was such clarity that this guy was able to pull and add to the, add to the discussion that it really stuck in my mind as to, how is this guy doing that? He always seems so cool, calm, collected when we're lost in the jungle. He's cool, calm, collected, and he's coming up with these pearls of wisdom that seem to actually contribute to the solution of, well, where actually are we? Or whatever the circumstance happened to be. So, after a while, I eventually spoke to him and, and, and I approached him about this, and he actually explained that that was his way of keeping perspective on what was going around him. So it was a stress management tool. So I use that story now when I'm teaching survival to help people develop a process and it's very important they have a process to manage their emotions, to control negative thoughts and to manage fear and panic because those are the things that really, really impact on decision making early on in any survival situations. Now a lot of other guys focus very, very heavily on kit, bushcraft skills and all those other paraphernalia items. To me, my military service has taught me very, very succinctly that if you don't think right, you're not going to perform well. And you're going to get yourself into an increasingly perilous situation. So this process, this tea ceremony, survival tea ceremony, is a way of pausing. A way of assessing the situation, deciding on best options, and disengaging a reactive mindset and putting yourself into a more problem-solving or analytical mindset. The, the, the way I teach it now is simple. I've, I've hijacked emergency services speak, and I'll use the acronym STOP. In, in emergency man management circles, STOP usually, the first letter is usually referring to the, to the word STOP. I replace that with SIT. Because when you sit down, you must, by, by nature, stop yourself moving around, and you, you're forcing yourself to be mindful, to start that process of looking at what's going on. The next letter is to think, quite apparently, which is really that take stock and take assess, make an assessment of what you've got available, what the situation you're actually in. You need to observe, make a plan, and then I've added one extra letter to this particular mind trigger, which is an A, which means to act, because a lot of people will sit there and plan, 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 and act never actually convert it into action. So, we act. So we end up with the, the, with the acronym STOPPER. So, sit, think, observe, plan, and act. Now, the way this is done, if you've got, and this is predominantly for a, a low-speed incident, so beyond life-saving, stuff where you really need to act to save and preserve life, much like a, a first aid situation. 
This is for that low speed realization that things aren't the way they're supposed to be. You've gotten lost. You're becoming more and more geographically confused. And the penny drops that you're not where you're supposed to be. That's when people normally panic. And they make the situation worse by reacting in an inappropriate way. So this is a, a process or a strategy to assist you to stop. So if you've got brew equipment in your, your gear, it's a good opportunity to sit down, find a shady tree, sit down and make yourself a cup of tea. Don't make any decisions in this period of time. Sit, allow the body to calm, to become centered and to, to work through what options you actually have. At that point, things will become more clear. Not solved, but definitely more clear. And most importantly, you haven't made things worse. I hope that helps. We're going to try and do a few more of these over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you next time out here in the bush. Stay safe. Stay strong.